Another method that surveyors use to measure irregular areas is what we call the trapezoidal rule. Okay. I'm not going to write the rule directly okay, or explicitly at this point, but what I want you, and rather than sort of uh, confusing you, I guess, let's look at it for what it is. Okay. What this does, though, is that this allows estimation of highly irregular areas, such as lakes and ponds. Okay. So compared to the offset surveys where they're irregular polygons, that could be divided into neat, you know, triangles and trapeziums and, and rectangles and so on. Lakes and ponds and parks and, and kind of those sort of uh, organic type um, areas where they're all sort of fairly random, there's no straight edges almost, it's all sort of random curves, um, we, we need to estimate it somehow. And, and I'll stress it's an estimation, so it's not going to be exact. So we can fit trapeziums around these areas. I think we can demonstrate this first with a, with an example. So example number one, okay, find the area of the pond using one application of the trapezoidal rule. So what what the rule really states is, well, can we somehow fit a trapezium to this based on the measurements given? So we have one measurement here, which is this is in meters by the way, so ten meters. Twenty five meters away, we have another measurement here, which is eighteen meters. Now. These two dotted lines are parallel to each other. Okay, I think that's important to note that. Okay, must be parallel to each other. This allows then the fitting of a trapezium. So if I if we draw a line, I might just draw another dotted line that way, and another dotted line this way. Okay, you can see that we can somehow. I mean, we can fit a trapezium. It's probably not the most accurate but we can fit a trapezium and even just get an estimation of the area which is better than nothing at all. Okay, So this is where the we need the, we need the formula for the area of a trapezium and we've learnt that already. Okay, So the area is equal to, so we take the average of the two parallel lines, so it's going to be 10 plus 18 okay, over 2 and we're going to multiply that by the height of the trapezium. Okay, so this is the perpendicular height, by the way. So if I measured the distance between the two parallel lines, it's going to be 25 meters. Okay, and that will be, okay, so enter on the calculator. So 10 plus 18 over 2 times 25, and we get 350 square meters. Okay, so that's what we call one application when we're using the one trapezium. Let's have a look at a more, um, a more involved example which uses multiple trapeziums. Okay, so example number two. Example number two, we want to estimate the area of this park. So we're going to use three applications of the trapezoidal rule to find the area of the park. In a way, it's not really, well, we can call it a rule, um, but at the same time, I think there's a little bit of common sense involved here that if we're fitting trapeziums to this, it's great to be able to visualize the actual trapeziums. And you can see that there's really nothing convoluted or difficult about this. It's just three trapeziums. You just need to know the measurements of these three trapeziums. So even if you forget the rule and, and you not and you don't know it, or even if you forget that it's on a formula sheet or anything like that, um, but you know the area of a trapezium, you can apply this rule. Okay. Now what we notice is that the dotted lines, so these are the, the parallels, okay? These are all parallel, all these lines. We don't necessarily show that they're parallel, but we assume that they are. And they're also equally spaced, but they don't necessarily have to be equally spaced. But I've shown that here uh, on this um, uh, on this like like a number line, okay? So which shows the spacing between the parallel lines. So we have, and I'm going to uh, label these trapeziums. We got trapezium A, we have trapezium B, and we have trapezium C. Okay? I could draw in the trapezium, but we're not going to. I'm not going to do it for all of them. Okay, so that could be the first trapezium there. Then we have another trapezium, um, trapezium B. Okay. Okay, and then we have trapezium C. Like so. Okay, so we can work these out individually. Okay, so trapezium A. Okay. Area is equal to the average of the parallel lines at 25 plus 32 over 2 and we're going to multiply that by the height or the width of the trapezium. Okay. 
Okay, so might work that out now. So 25 plus 32 on 2, multiplied by 20, and we get 570. Okay, so we'll line that. So trapezium B. Okay, area is equal to. So I might just write area just so we're not confused with the A and the A here for area. So let's call that, um, we'll, I'll just write the full word. So area is equal to, again, the average or the mean of the parallel lines. So we've got 32 and 28. So it's important now that we focus on this trapezium in the middle. So 32 plus 28 over 2. Again, times the height of 20. And that gives us, and I want just 32 plus 28. And that gives us 600. Okay, and the last one, uh, trapezium C. Okay, we have the two di the two parallel lines, twenty eight plus nineteen. Okay, we take the average of those and multiply that by twenty, and I'm just running out of a little bit of space there. So, twenty eight plus nineteen, and I'll just enter that in, and I get four hundred and seventy. Okay. So the total area is approximately equal to, so notice we use the approximately equal to sign, okay? In fact, uh, actually I'll, I'll sort that out later. In fact, I think on the other one, I don't know if I used that. No, I didn't actually. That should be approximately equal to, okay? So I'll just correct that now. Because it's not, it's an estimation and I made that point earlier on anyway. So it's just important that we, we do use that symbol there. So total area, is equal to 570 plus 600 plus 470 okay so 570 plus 600 plus 470 and we get 1640 okay so uh, square meters for this park okay and that's how we apply the trapezoidal rule okay the rule itself is explicitly stated in the formula sheet um, I couldn't actually write it down um, and the and in fact the, the formula of how the formula sheet quotes it um, yeah, actually I'll do it in a different colour so okay so the rule would go area is approximately equal to H on 2 and I think it's a DF plus DL I'll just check that quickly now um, yeah, DF plus DL, so d the first distance plus the last distance, okay, should be an L there, and sometimes that's how it's quoted, but how we've used the formula, we've used DF and DL, these are the, these are the parallel lines, okay, and we've taken the average of those, so we've divided it by two, because I actually feel that that's more intuitive to think of it as the average of, of the two parallel lines, because really, well, what's a trapezium? It's a distorted rectangle, really. And then you multiply it by by h. Okay. Regardless, though, if if you feel that you you'd rather use a formula, um, by all means, use the formula. It will work. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just depends on what you find easier. Okay. Thanks very much, and all the best for your studies.